What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Gen Con 2024 on the Glass Cannon Network. I'm Joe O'Brien from the Glass Cannon Network, and I am very excited right now to bring up to our, our interview slate here a good buddy of the show, a GM extraordinaire on the Glass Cannon Network. You know him, you love him, Chaosium's Brian Holland. Brian, welcome back. Good you buddy. know me, you tolerate me. <laughs> All right, that's probably more what it's like. You're just like, ah, oh, this fucking guy again. Yeah, no, I know what he's like, you know. <laughs> No, it's it's fantastic to uh, to get to talk to you here, honestly, because last year you GM'd for us at the booth at Gen Con. Uh, this year we're in the midst of a well, we're pre-recording this, so we are in the midst of a Pen Dragon game. Uh, it has already finished by the time this airs at Gen Con, uh, but we've gotten the chance to play together again, and it's great. But what we haven't gotten the chance to do, honestly, is just sit down and geek out over what Chaosium is working on this year for Gen Con. What well, you know, and a lot of this means what they've already finished. <laughs> so what is coming out at Gen Con, in or around Gen yeah. Con, and then also, you know, what might be coming for the future. Couple different games we're going to talk about today in the interview. So I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it, to be honest. Uh, you, like I said, we're pre-recording this, so you haven't come out to, to Gen Con yet. What is going to be different about Gen Con this year for, for Chaos? Cool. Like, I mean, uh, I knew this year's Gen Con was going to be different when I started having meetings about it in December. Sorry, wow. November of last year. So that was a pretty, <laughs> oh, pretty big one. The biggest thing uh, we're doing at Gen Con this year, which has been taking up so much of my time, because for those of you who don't know, I don't just play Chaosium games. I work at Chaosium. I am the the marketing director. I also am sometimes writer on some of our stuff. Um but the biggest thing for me as the marketing director is that we are doing for the first time a, a, a exclusive Chaosium uh, Call of Cthulhu event room. So those of you, if you've been to Gen Con before or if, you, if, if, if you're there right now or if you're thinking about going, we have the, the big exhibit hall that everybody knows where all your favorite publishers and games are there to be to you know for you to buy and you to see artists all that kind of stuff that's where the glass cannon guys have the, have their cool booth with all their exciting stuff um right across the hall from that is a series of of rooms uh which you have to pay money as a as a publisher or a sponsor of the show to be able to use and we are right. doing that for the, for the first time this year of the these privilege. exclusive the privilege. rooms you could call them champagne yes, rooms ex- you, you literally could you literally, you literally could, could so in this literally- tell them tell them <laughs> tell them tell them i'm jumping uh, ahead okay. so uh because there's only like i think six to twelve of these rooms and there's a lot more people that would came to use them this past year you actually you didn't just have to say yes we will pony up the cash you had to say, we'll pony up the cash and also here is our pitch for what we will do in that room. Wow. Because I think Gen Con didn't just want people, uh, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus like because I actually don't know, but the impression I got was that Gen Con didn't want people sponsoring one of these rooms and then just using it as a second place to sell stuff. They wanted mm. the emphasis to be on player experience. So, um, I just got done with my, um, my annual rewatch of The Shining and I thought, hey, you know what would be really cool is that last scene, you know, the ballroom, I wanted to do like a 1920s party. So, like a 19 – so, so what, what our event room is here uh, for Call of Cthulhu and, uh, or for Gen Con 2024 is uh, a New Year's Eve party as it was 100 years ago. So, it is Happy New, Year's, Happy New Year 1924 <laughs> and it is a Call of Cthulhu themed uh, room. So, you can come in, you can play uh, Call of Cthulhu demos, you can play a – unique um, Call of Cthulhu full scenario that I wrote called Old One Sign, which is Old Lang Sign. No one knows what this is. It's the song that people sing on New Year's Eve. Does yes, that happen in the yes. States? Yeah, old, yeah. But it's, it's about, you know, you, it's, it's a unique Gen Con specific scenario about going to a New Year's Eve party in 1924. Uh, you can play Horror on the Orient Express, the board game, uh, which is not out yet. It's just it's it's just still up on GameFound for late pledges. That's at the time of recording. I think I think it's still a little while to to go, uh, and then which it, that should be out next year. Uh, for 2025 and we're also doing all kinds of other fun stuff we've got a big selfie wall that you can you can take a photo of um, tweet it out with hashtag the stars are right and you could win one of five $100 vouchers for chaosium.com we're doing a LARP we're doing uh, meet and greets uh, VIP games with folks like Mark Mia Mike Mason the creative director of Call of Cthulhu uh, we are doing so much stuff we're doing a huge mega game uh, that Becca Scott and her crew are running in there uh, so and we've got two full-time cosplayers standing at the front, hanging out, handing out um, 
party invitations, uh, which sort of invite you into the room and on the reverse side sort of tell you everything that's going on at our booth and here and here and there. But they are dressed up uh, uh, in 1920s garb, you know, one flapper, one, you know, dilettante. Uh, and so, yeah, if, 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 uh, if, if you're not at Gen Con this year, be sure to stay tuned to Calcium on, on, on social media to see some of the photos, what's going on, uh, and, and, and you just have to make it out next year to see what we do then. So, it, it is a big one. So My face is literally hurting from smiling so much. <laughs> this, is, this sounds so amazing. Well, uh, and I can't ho- even hopefully imagine- Hopefully, by the time this airs, you've come to check it out already. Yeah, yeah. Because, exactly. yeah. I would have already been there. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm here to tell you, it's phenomenal. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I'm yeah. so excited for you. I can't imagine how much work this is putting together, but um, it just goes to show you how- how much work Chaosium is putting into the the gaming experience for so many people and not just for Call of Cthulhu fans. I mean, that's obviously a big part of it, but one mm. of the things we love the most about Chaosium is the variety of games that you offer and the passion that you put into games that have been around for a really, really long time and deserve to have a spotlight this, shown on them. Because this king they, of the segue here. Look yeah. at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know what? These interviews and the games that we've been playing all weekend uh, at at, uh, at Gen Con, which I'm sorry, you know, that are airing during Gen Con, mm-hmm. one of which is the Pendragon game that you're running that I'm playing in. Uh, if you're not watching that or you haven't checked it out, you can find it on YouTube here on our channel. Uh, Brian is running Nora, Ibrahim, Paula Deming, Skidmar, and I through a, a two shot of Pendragon. And you also get to see character creation at the start, which is really great. But the point is, uh, these are games that I was not uh, as aware of growing up. I didn't really know about a lot of this stuff. And you shine a light on these these fantastic games that, uh, and you you develop them and re-release them in in new and different ways. And I really really uh, appreciate that. Call of Cthulhu is a perfect example as you keep updating to new editions. And then you have games like RuneQuest, which was our focus last Gen Con, mm-hmm. where we did a lot of uh, the cult stuff for for RuneQuest, and that is all incredible. Uh, I would never know about that if we hadn't done that. But this year. <laughs> Pendragon. And then we're going to talk about an exciting, thrilling new Call of Cthulhu release that is a brand new uh, setting for Call of Cthulhu that hasn't been done before. So we're going to talk about that. But first, let's focus in on Pendragon for a little bit. Uh, This is something when we came to you and said, what are you guys excited about at Gen Con this year? What can we play together to, to, uh, you know, just shine a light on on something that you're you're fired up about? Your first response was Pendragon. You were like, I really want to do some Pendragon. So talk to us a little bit about what this new release is. One Mm -hmm. year ago at, in our booth, we played the starter set of Gen Con. What has changed in the year since then? What are you offering now? Uh, Yep. There it is. That, that beautiful starter starter set set. loved those pre-gen characters. It has a great scenario that, uh, the, you know, kind of reimagines the, the fantasy of the, the fan, the, the the mystical fantasy of the Arthurian legend. Uh, so why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit, first of all, about, why does this game get updated and what has, uh, you know, what has happened since last Gen Con in the in, in Pendragon release? Oh, well, so much. So the biggest thing since since this time last year is that, uh, so obviously we launched the starter set, as you said. And um, this year we've we've seen the release of the, the Pendragon core rulebook, uh, which yes. is sort of like the player's guide to Pendragon. So there's all your character creation stuff, the game systems, how the downtime works, weapons, combat, all that stuff. And alongside uh, and don't it, forget. Oh, Coat of Arms Generator. Oh, the Coat of Arms Generator. Yes. Well, go in, go in. Let me, you want to talk yeah. about something that jumped it's, out you, at you me. You talk about that really cool. It got me so geeked up. I'll talk about it on the actual play. Go watch the actual play, and you can see my details on how geeked up I got about it. But, yeah, the point know. being, yeah, I mean, yeah, just the, show show them a little bit of that. Look at that. It's just amazing. Tables. And that's not, yeah, and that those are just examples. That's not like, choose one of these. Like, no. <laughs> there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of combinations that you could end up coming up with depending on the dice you roll the point the 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 thing that i just want to get out is that i learned so much about actual (laughs) heraldry because as i researched these words i had never heard before like on the internet they would all come back as like actual terms that were referring to actual medieval heraldry and i was like oh this is just so cool that this is part of this game anyway sorry uh, continue (laughs) (laughs) i cut you off well i I mean that's one of the things that's, that's super excited because um like the, the core conceit of Pendragon is, yeah, you're playing a knight. Uh, you're playing a knight in King Arthur's Britain. So, we know that it's going to be not 
historically accurate because it's you know it's 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 mythology and monsters and magic and to whatever degree that makes sense for you um and it's about what kind of knight you're going to become that's the whole uh, idea of the game you're playing a knight uh and how will you uh change as this as you experience this world of what we call this, this world of brutal medieval realism uh with with this uh sort of over overture of uh british mythology and fantasy i suppose and and that's yeah. uh, the game is about how things how you'll change how you will amass glory how you will make your own like carve your own legend so to speak so um sometimes people are saying like oh well you know is this a game where you just sort of follow around king arthur while he does all the cool stuff he does from the stories you can do that if if that's what you think your players will like or you can you can run it how i run it and how the game sort of expects you to run it is in like hey uh this during this time king arthur is off doing this and this is what the world is like yeah uh here are some examples of adventures that could happen during the same time to your characters and how there's like a follow-on effect. So, for instance, if there's an ongoing war with the Saxons, your characters might be like, well, you know, the the castle that we stay in, um, you know, we're having to, we're, we're, everybody's really hungry because we are sending all the food we can to the soldiers. So, how are we going to try and solve that problem for us locally because King Arthur's waging a war against the Saxons right now? So, yeah. so that, that, that's and, an and example, one of the right? reasons, And one of the reasons that makes a lot of sense to me now after having played it a little bit, uh, not only last year, but a little bit this year, with you is that the character sheet is so in depth about n not only combat i mean it's breaking down very specific details of combat each different weapon each different kind of shield each different kind of horse each different kind of lance <laughs> the there's horses. a lot of detail to that however there's also a great amount of detail to the personality characteristics the traits of a person how cruel you are how forgiving you are how um how much you are likely to uh uh, how temperate you are versus how indulgent, lustful you are. <laughs> how lustful you are, how proud you are versus how modest you are. All of these, they all are on a scale that really takes what I think a lot of people could consider the old school. Um, uh, I, I forget what you would what you would term it, but the the alignment, right? Like the nine alignment kind of mm -hmm. platform that a lot of us grew up with. It takes that and it says, no, this this is a game that will break this down so deep, so that you have such a really well defined idea of how this person would act in any kind of given situation. Yeah. But a lot of those are also come down to die rolls. So like <laughs> you can really change your personality as you adventure. It's really, really fascinating. And then the mechanics can take that over as well. And I think that's like, there might be some people listening who are thinking like, oh, Joe, uh, you're describing me playing a character in a role-playing game, which I can do in any role-playing game, any fantasy yeah. role-playing game. I can do all that stuff. Um, so my opinion uh, from a uh, somebody who's played a lot of, a lot of different role-playing games and has, has written for a bunch of them uh, is that, the mechanics of your game really need uh, in a way to reinforce the themes of your game. So, for example, in, in, in Vampire, the current Vampire, uh, with the hunger dice mechanic, every time you reach for the dice, you have to swap out some based on how hungry you are, no matter what you're doing. What that reminds you of is that every single role you make in the game, you are reminded that you're a blood blood-sucking monster, which is what the <laughs> game is about. It's about like you trying to balance the humanity you have with with the monstrousness right uh and then um so so in in pendragon you've got these like your personality is broken into these binary attributes you know lustful and chaste and proud and modest and temperate and indulgent uh and yeah you could say like oh i can just role play my character to be more temperate if i want to but what me mechanizing it what that means is that it reminds you that hey this game is about emotion it's about passion Mm -hmm. And that that's what it comes down to. So, and some of the cool fun stuff is um, if if your one of your traits ever becomes sixteen or higher, that means you become famous for that trait. And that's when things is, get really interesting because uh, you you could have a um, uh, you as a player might want to be so, say you had sixteen lustful, and um, I've just me as the GM has just introduced like oh uh, the king uh, brings out his wife and she's gorgeous. Um, but you don't want to offend anybody, so you're just going to be pleasant. 
Uh, and you as the player might be like, yeah, I, I want the king to be friendly with me. I don't want to flirt with his wife. Um, I'd be like, that's cool. Unfortunately, your character uh, is great. famously you lustful. <laughs> yeah, your character is 16 lustful. You're going to have to roll and try and fail that that role. Otherwise, I'm sorry, your character just has to flirt with this person because that's just how it is, you know. And that's the danger of of, of, of going, you know, danger. Because, you know, some people are just like that. Like, oh, man, we went out with Craig on the weekend. That guy just cannot keep his mouth shut, you know, when, when shit's going down. Like, I don't know what. It's like something's wired in his brain. Like, hey, man, don't cause any problems. And he just goes. For- we all know somebody who just, like, can't help themselves in some sort of situation. And, and that's what- the game is about is about really molding a unique character and yeah. i think you found that i mean i've witnessed you you finding that out in real time when we've been playing the game absolutely absolutely like, you know, like without yeah. without spoiling anything if you haven't seen yeah. it I, i'd love you to see this develop even in character creation but i do get a little bit frustrated during character creation <laughs> because i feel like i'm like i'm playing a person i don't want to play the way this this is sort of shaping up and then this like something clicked and i realized that what was happening here is uh, even if it's someone I w- might not necessarily like, I thought I was like, this is building a really great character in an authorian story, right? Like, because you're still going to be a knight. You're still going to have a certain degree of loyalty and honor and valor. These are all it's built. The mechanics are built so that you're not a, a cowardly, you know, an a-hole. Yeah. That, that's the mechanics are built a kind of against that. However, you can be a little bit more lustful. You can be a little bit more selfish. You can be a little bit more uh, cruel than the average knight. And that can really start to shape an interesting story story character if every character in the story is just kind all the time and has no flaws nobody wants to watch that story or see that story exactly you have to have these layers and man does pendragon give you that opportunity and all of a sudden i was like and then there we had a moment in the game that i won't spoil where i was like i think i want this to happen and it's bad but i think i got my guys (laughs) got to be the a-hole and i kind of roll and we see what happens. And it's just really, it's really surprising it's, to it's, like. It's, it's, it's good yeah. fun. But it'll, what also happens is, is, is from, because it's like uh, if you're familiar with any Chaosium games, which are based on basic role playing, BRP, it's that same roll low mechanic where after you succeed a, succeed a skill, you check to see later on in the downtime phase if that will go up. Um, and what's unique about Pendragon is that as, you know, because of, that's binary, if you if your temperant, temperate goes up, your indulgent will automatically go down because you only have 20 points between those two stats. Right. So, you'll see your character will change mechanically over time and you as a player being able to just look down at those numbers will remind you of where you're at and the kind of things that you think your character might do. Um, an example I like to go for, which is a... Um, uh, and probably, uh, honestly, a simpler touchstone for most people in this day and age is the character of Sir Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones. Yes. Um, so, w- when he starts out, he is an A-grade a-hole who's clearly amazing with a sword, super pretentious, um, probably doesn't actually uh, in any way uh, exhibit the the many knightly virtues that you're expected. And also, then- let me let me just throw in, because this is something yeah. I got from Pendragon, I, and yeah. Game of Thrones is my favorite, is uh, famous- yeah. For disloyalty. Yes, like famous exactly. for this. Uh, as you know, as an oath breaker or whatever you want to say. And you can be mm-hmm. famous for these these negative traits in this game if they get rolled that way. But then yeah, continue with your example. Well, then, that's uh, what yeah. I was gonna say. So then in uh in a storm of swords, I'm sorry if I'm spoiling what would be a ten year old episode of television now or a thirty year old book, but <laughs> he, he he gets his sword hand cut off and that forces him to go through this this whole, you know. Uh, reevaluation of what he values in life and how he changed, and you see him become. You know, he's still not by any means a good person, but he <laughs> definitely changes significantly and probably yes. begins to exhibit some more of those knightly virtues as he experiences things in the world. And that's and one begins, of the things that is yeah. And he begins it, to come. He begins to come. Begins to become like a fan favorite character, and exactly, yeah. he begins to he runs into his own fame. And it's negative, right? Like he runs into that, you are disloyal fame. And he has to be like, I'm tired of hearing that. People misunderstand what is happening. And that's what's really cool about Pendragon is that when you're famous for something, it can be great, but it can also come back to bite Mm -hmm. you. And you have to roll and try to fail it if you don't want people to 
think this thing about you, which is just fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. awesome. So it's, 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 it's really good fun. We've not even talked about the combat yet. Like if you like combat mechanics, like it is, uh, it, it's, it's not Pathfinder, but it's more than Call of Cthulhu. Um, it's probably closer to RuneQuest in terms of the, 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 not necessarily the crunch, but the tactical things. So like using a spear, being mounted versus being not mounted. These all have modifiers. Uh, using your passions. Uh, to increase a skill and the likelihood of your your critic like changing your level of critical success. Right, you have um, a limited so you, resource that you can yeah. choose to spend when there's a roll you really want to hit. It, it really, but it isn't like luck in Cthulhu where you can do it after the roll. Like you got to do no. it ahead of time and yeah. roll the dice and see what happens. You know, and so yeah. I really love that mechanic too. And yeah, you're right. And armor is really detailed and kind of chunky yeah. and very important. And I mean, you know, so to speak, it's it's really like it, it well, makes there's no a magical big difference. healing in the game. That's the right. thing. So, so one of the things, and we and we um uh at, at this point uh you know game no spoilers but we haven't we haven't got into this mechanics in the in in the game yet we still haven't done the third the third installment um but uh when you when you take damage um if you know you you subtract your armor from it so your armor is really important and there are some weapons that are actually get a bonus die if you're wearing if your opponent is wearing certain armor so you got to be wary of that um, <sighs> so cool whenever you take damage uh, you actually have to record it record that damage as a separate wound because you literally apply first aid to individual wounds. Yeah. Because so and and then the other thing is this grows into a physical thing because you know wounds can leave like you, you you might get a really bad wound on your face, right? And then you survive it and but then you get to add that to your character like, oh my character has this massive scar going down his face and you and as this a player will be like I remember this you know and that yeah, might affect things like your appearance might, your appeal, yeah, appeal rather or yeah. your yeah like how yeah. people trust you how trustworthy whatever mm. uh, it's really really interesting and yeah. the uh, you know we gotta we gotta keep it moving because I do want to talk yeah. about Cthulhu <laughs> as well yeah. but I mean I mean I could just go on and on it's, it's, it's so fantastic talk to me real quick before we move on to Cthulhu about uh, the Grey Knight what is the Grey oh, Knight oh the Grey Knight so the Grey Knight is yeah. a is a starter campaign uh, for Pendragon. It is playable actually um, with the core rulebook or even just with the starter set. And I would actually almost recommend you play it with the starter set with the pre-gens because uh, this, the campaign in this um, actually bridges from the three scenario campaign in the starter set. So if you use those characters, you play the three campaigns in there, uh, sorry, the three scenarios in there, then bridge into this campaign, play this full campaign, uh, you will see your characters uh, change. And develop over time. There's nothing wrong with you, you know, making your own characters with the core rulebook and going back and doing it. But I, I really think that's that's a really cool way of going about it. Um, this 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 book is. I, I, it's hard to talk about without sort of spoiling what happens, but it is uh, it is very very cool. Uh, lots of fun. I, I think I it. think it's enough and said. I don't want you to spoil anything. Said. The fact no that it's a anything. starter campaign is good to know. It's, you can exactly. get it as That's a beginner. You, you, you can, can hop in, in as a beginner, and it can really and give you a good chunky now. story. And uh, you can you can jump on to chaosium.com right now. Any of these products, uh, the Pendragon Core Rulebook, the Starter Set, or the Grey Knight, you can use the code Pen Cannon. And get fifteen percent off, and that will uh, that will Pen show cannon. that will show my bosses that you folks are watching the, the 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 guys in the glass cannon here and having a great time, and that we should do more stuff. Uh, yeah, like, like more yeah, we, we say stuff. it on the so, actual play. We can't really yeah. say it enough. If you want to support uh, Chaosium and if you want to support the Glass Cannon Network, th that's a huge thing to help us out. Is use that code, check out that mm -hmm. core rule book. You get a discount, and uh, we get the opportunity to work together even more. Because yeah, yeah. we got it. We got to make sure that. Uh, that uh, you know the Brian's bosses want to want to see <laughs> this you know uh, everybody in the glass cannon loving uh, chaosium stuff so yeah. that help us out if, love. if you if yeah, you, yeah that's I mean, the you best way it. you won't regret you can it. Help and us uh, and I will just say even if you're like uh, if you're on the fence and you're not sure if you can convince your group to play it pick up the starter set there's a there's a uh, solo adventure in there teaches you the setting and the rules you can play it you can give it to your buddies let them play it then decide, decide hey do we want to play the campaign it's in the starter set so great, okay. great place to start from anyway we're, we're running out of time we have so much yeah. to talk about <laughs> and I, I really want to talk about Cthulhu and but I, I have to just say I, I have to say in the interview congratulations I just thought of it because as soon as you mentioned solo adventure uh, the fact that I mean 
the results are already out, but we've pre-recorded, so we don't know the results. Yeah, I've got no idea. But you're an <laughs> any nominated writer uh, as uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, for that's, that's, Alone Against that's, that's the Static. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's just it's so cool, man. Congratulations, I'm, I'm really Thank happy for you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, I've won either the silver or gold by now. But if not, um, the, the 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 biggest feather in my cap for that is still running the Bachelor Party Prelude game for you folks uh, here on the Glass Cannon. So that was <laughs> that the was Prelude so to Alone Against the Static. So that was so, so great. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I keep getting geeked up about Cthulhu here. We're not talking about uh, your classic supplement to the to the core. We're not talking about a, a new adventure or uh, you know a mystery. We're talking about something very different here. Why don't you, why don't you uh, tell us what's coming yeah, for, so for Cthulhu? What uh, people have been hoping has been coming for a while was uh, announced just a couple of weeks ago will be uh, in pre-release at Gen Con. So, that means ex- available exclusively at Gen Con to begin with. And that is Cthulhu by Gaslight the investigator's guide. So, Cthulhu by Gaslight is Call of Cthulhu set in the 1890s Gaslight period in London. So, think like if you think like Jack the Ripper, like that that kind of era. Um, I might be going a bit earlier, but like, you know, the, the, yeah, uh, like Count Dracula, Frankenstein, like all those kind of like that Gaslight period in, in England mm-hmm. is, is what it's all about. Um, it's it's later than the Regency Cthulhu stuff, so it's not quite quite what that is. Um, but what's unique about this is that it, the Investigator's Guide is is out and um, at Gen Con, and it's actually a standalone supplement. So, you don't need to buy the Call of Cthulhu starter set or the Call of Cthulhu Keeper rulebook to then use this like you do for, say, Down Darker Trails, our Wild West version of Cthulhu, or for Pulp Cthulhu. Uh, it's actually got all the core rules in there, so you can just pick this up and start playing and you don't need to worry about hauling your other books around. Or if you, for some reason, uh, have never played Call of Cthulhu and don't own those books, you don't need to buy them in order to play in this setting. Um, it's, uh, it's it's super exciting. There's some really unique things about the Gaslight period. So, things like um, if you're actually like a, a, a low, lowly sort of commoner, someone like a chimney sweep, for instance, uh, you can like- Get into most people's houses without any issue. So it's like wow. if, if you're all, so if you're like, hey, let's roll up some characters. Like, oh, I'm going to be a cop. I'm going to be, you know, a professor. I'm going to be, and then you're like, you got to do an investigation. You're like, oh, we need to search, you know, this mansion here. Uh, oh, they're not going to let us in. Obviously, we don't know them. Like, oh. Good thing one of our characters is is a is is like you know a maid or a, a gardener, cook. yeah, and, yeah, gardener because they can just walk in and go and they've got the whole like you know seen and not heard you know like stand hide in plain sight they're like because the, the the like the higher born people that time just don't notice service people so you can just <laughs> right. sneak in there and do that kind of thing. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff about uh, that I can't get into because it's potentially spoiling stuff, but. Um, the unique uh, mythos elements that are around at that time, the various cults and organizations that are there. Um, so, this book is is out, as I said, in pre-release at Gen Con. That means that if you're at Gen Con, we've got a limited number. You, hopefully, if you're, you're there, you've managed to get one. Uh, and then everyone else will have to wait for the wider release, which is later this year. I can't say exactly the date right now, but hopefully by Gen Con we can. Um, and then hot on the heels of that is Cthulhu by Gaslight, the Keeper's Guide, which has got your scenarios in it, uh, all your like how to write a your bestiary, all that kind of stuff. And uh, it's actually going to be so, a new sorry, supplement me, for Cthulhu. Yeah. And let me just clarify. So, yeah. the pre-release for people that are here in Indianapolis is- uh, it's an investigator's, investigator's handbook, an uh, investigator's yeah. guide, and it's just going to help familiarize you with the game, but it does not have any uh, adventures, mysteries in it uh, yet. So, no, it, it's not, but you can still play um, using that. So, if you're writing your own stuff, all the rules are still there. Uh, there's mm-hmm. also like in the recent book, Cults of Cthulhu, there is a Gaslight Era scenario in that book that you can play with these rules. There's also in Nameless Horrors, which is a scenario collection, there's a Gaslight Era adventure in that you can play with these new updated rules and, and setting stuff. So, there's plenty of stuff you can you can do. It is still everything you need to play is in here. Um, getting the Keeper's Guide will just sort of take that to the to the next level and it's got pre-written scenarios in there and that kind of thing. Um, can you so can that, I press you here? Can you can you give me a, a ballpark? What are you shooting for in terms of release? Is it oh is it like that'll be Christmas? Few, is it no, before off, Christmas off for the investigators guide? You mean yeah for the act yeah. the full release? Oh uh, sure sure. Uh, so if the, the investigators guide is out around October. Oh, okay, and I believe the keepers book I think is going to be sort of probably like January next year, like so okay. early stuff. So this yeah, it's just a couple months to, to give plenty of people plenty of time to really dive into the investigators guide like get involved with that and then when they want to up their game to the next level they can buy the keeper's book it's one of these things where the keeper's book is not necessary to play 
Um, but the investigator's book will be. So if you're a gotcha. keeper, you'll be buying both. But you, if you're a player, you only need the investigator book. And a keeper yeah. could could run a game with definitely, only the investigator book as a, yeah, yeah. as a reference. Yeah. And I love that it, it, you don't have to get the core uh, uh, yeah, Call of Cthulhu uh, the investigator's handbook in order to play mm-hmm. it. What, uh, speaking of next year. You got anything cooking over there, Holland? Were you, uh, what are look, you brewing look, up look that you do, can do, talk we about? We got some stuff. So, so here's look. I, what I can't talk about is exact release dates. What I can talk about is um, so this bad boy here. Just, just spinning. Back. You have something on him. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This, this bad boy here, right? Uh, he is one of three Pendragon core core rule books. What? Yeah. So we have next year. Uh, we have the Pendragon. Uh, Game Master book, which oh, has awesome. got like the full bestiary, like how to design a campaign, like all that nitty gritty type stuff, like how does treasure work, how do you develop your own, you know, all, all that stuff, writing an NPC. That's all in there. Again, that's something for GMs only who want to take their game to the next level. Also got a lot of background and lore information in it, all that kind of stuff. So, you can write your own, write your own scenarios. We also have the Nobles Handbook uh, and that will continue complete the sort of trilogy of core books for Pendragon. The Nobles book is, again, taking it to an even deeper level for both players and GMs. And this has got expanded rules on the winter phase, so which is the downtime period in between sessions. Yeah, I sessions. wanted to talk about this and we, we didn't, we didn't, yeah, just didn't yeah. have so time. But you, you still do that, but it expands the rules on that. It's got like rules for like um, running land, uh, farming, you know, collating, all that kind of stuff. And then a whole bunch of other like noble stuff, like, uh, you know, like how do marriages work? How, do, how does, you know... Um, how do bequeathments work and and uh, all, all that kind of like really nitty gritty medieval stuff? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's sort of similar to Gaslight. Like, like this book is all you need to play, and these other two books really expand on on what's happening. Deep uh, in the, it. Yeah. Yeah. The next release we've got coming up for Call of Cthulhu, we've got two things, which is the uh, Keepers Decks Second Edition. So the little decks of cards that keepers use for. Um, uh, reference and such during a game i use them all the time we've got they're, they're updated with brand new art brand new wording uh it's definitely worth especially if you've had your decks for a few years they're probably beaten up definitely worth upgrading and we also have two new core Cthulhu i saw books. you use one live in, in pedra yeah yeah it was, you yeah, pulled exactly, out a card yeah, you're cards. like yeah i've got this nifty cards. card right here yeah, i got yeah. all the information i need <laughs> it's everything you need <laughs> um the two two core Cthulhu books are coming so one is called order of the stone it is a three scenario campaign standalone uh set in 1920 20s New England, so it's your standard setting. Uh, and the second book is uh, called No Time to Scream. No Time to Scream is like a spiritual sequel to Gateways to Terror. And Gateways to Terror and No Time to Scream both contain short play Call of Cthulhu scenarios. So they go for roughly one hour of play. So they're shorter. The difference is um, Gateways to Terror was paperback. This one's going to be hardcover. And the, the next best thing about this new one called No Time to Scream is that I'm one of the contributing authors. So, you can yes, play dude. one of my scenarios in that too. So, <laughs> you can uh, you Are can you involved. just like crazy busy with the writing now too? Like, Well, well it, not to let you too far behind the curtain, but the scenario I wrote for that was done like two years ago. So, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm not busy okay. right now. I've, I'm busy with other stuff, which hopefully will be out, you know, in the next uh, year or so, but we'll see how we go. Well, I'm very yeah. excited for you, man. That's so awesome. Thanks, uh, obviously, you're doing a fantastic job writing, but also Chaosium is doing a wonderful job of putting out and publishing amazing books. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, the Pendragon book looks and feels amazing. You feel like you have, to say, a really high quality item and it also just sends you back. It, it feels like parchment as you turn each <laughs> thick, heavy, weathered page uh, with, you know, coat of arms and all the descriptions of weapons and armor. It's, it's really fantastic. Uh, and then I'm really looking forward to Cthulhu by Gaslight. I think that that is a, such an awesome setting it's to explore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, we are out of time. I mean, I could, talk, right. I could talk to you about this all day. This is just yeah. fantastic. We got to keep moving, though. Uh, but we, we got to keep it run. moving. Uh, <laughs> everybody, thank you for tuning in, for watching. If you are not here in Indianapolis, this this is for you. We miss you. We wish you were here. And we, we just want to give you some insight into what Brian has probably been talking about nonstop up all day every day at his booth <laughs> and at uh, chaosium special uh, side room this year so yeah we're, we're happy to give you a little bit of insight into what's going on at chaosium and we're really looking forward to the fall and early next year as more uh pendragon and cthulhu uh products continue to come out so uh thanks everybody for tuning in use that code below to get 15 percent off use the code pencan at 50 percent off uh pendragon core pendragon uh starter set and the gray knight and otherwise uh yeah if you haven't seen it check out the actual play but uh we'll leave it we'll leave it at that have a good one everybody take it easy and uh we'll see you soon bye thanks everyone bye